Welcome to the Bethel Family Worship Center. If you're looking for something fresh, real, and powerful in your life, you've come to the right place. Connect with us on social media to get live stream service notifications, podcasts, and up-to-date information on upcoming events. We're so glad you've decided to join us here at Bethel Family Worship Center for a life-transforming message and would love to hear how God is impacting your life through this ministry. So share your experience with us in the comments below. Also, if you want to be a part of what BFWC is doing in the city of Indianapolis and beyond, you can contribute financially by visiting bfwc.net forward slash giving and choose the option that works best for you. We hope you enjoyed today's message. I want to talk about the hot, the cold, and the lukewarm tonight, okay? But let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege, God, to stand here in this pulpit tonight. Thanking you, God, for the privilege just to share the goodness of your word. I pray, God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Can't preach without the anointing, God. And I pray, Lord, every heart and mind will be open to receive your word. Let us receive it with gladness tonight. We want to lift you up, Lord, and exalt you. Hallelujah. And give praise unto your holy name. And we ask for your help in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 and 16, it said, And to the angel of the church of the Laodicean, write these things. So the Lord is telling the pastor, to write down these things, okay? Saith he, amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of all the creation of God. I know thy works. How many believes he knows our works? Amen. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Hmm. This kind of reminds me, as I read that, kind of remind me of a Sunday school song we used to sing years ago and with the children. It goes something like this. When you're up, you're up. But when you're down, you're down. But when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. Halfway is hard to stay. Can you say amen? Amen. Anybody remember that song? Amen. Hallelujah. Also, this reminds me of the different kind of churches and Christians we see today. There's the hot. Thank God. I don't know about you, but I felt the hot while I was worshiping God. Amen? There's the cold, and there's the lukewarm. So we talk about the hot church. The hot church is our own fire church. Amen? Amen? How many glad to be a part of their own fire church? It kind of reminds me of our church, own fire church. If you don't think so, visit sometimes another place, but don't miss this one when we're not having church. And you'll find out that we've got a hot church, and I'm so thankful to have the be a part of the hot church. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So we're, the, we're a hot church, amen, experiencing a revival spirit. When people can praise the Lord, people can shout, people can dance, hallelujah. The on fire church has an on fire pastor. How many glad for our pastors? Amen. We have on fire pastors. Bishop Helton, Pastor Beverly, amen. 
pastors with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Preaching and teaching the Word of God under the anointing power. We're also blessed to have anointed music. Hallelujah. Anointed singing and ministries that reach out into our community. All the good reports that we've been getting lately, amen, of our outreach. Brother and Sister Hubbard are doing a fantastic job. And somebody said, what about that good message he preached Sunday? <laughs> kind of makes me wish I could preach when I hear all these good preachers, you know. Amen. Reaching out beyond these walls, ministering to the lost, ministering to the hungry people, ministering to the hurting. And we're so grateful tonight to know, amen, that we have dedicated, committed a staff here in, this church, in our church. We have dedicated volunteers, hallelujah, willing workers. And we're also a very friendly church. And we thank God for Bethel Family Worship Center. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good hot church. Hallelujah. And then there's the cold church. Amen. A cold church is a dead church. Anything dead needs to be buried. If you don't, it'll start stinking. Come on. A cold church is a dead church. It has no spiritual life. It has no anointing music or singing. It has no anointing preaching or teaching. Amen. It is very unfriendly. Hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever been to a cold church. I've been to a cold church a few times. And one thing I found out, when you go to a cold church, if they recognize you're there, they'll look at you and, what are you doing here? Huh? Maybe you've never experienced that, but I have. Amen. So, if you've never been to a cold church, you're probably blessed. Hallelujah. Because when you get there, you know, you go there expecting to get something from God and all of a sudden, you find out it's a very cold place, and when you leave there, you're in worse condition than you was when you got there. <laughs> Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, it says, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. From such, he said, turn away. Amen. They have a form of godliness. That's a cold church. Amen, just have a form, you know. And if you don't have no spirit in it, it ain't no life. You know, where there's spirit, there's life. And when the spirit's gone, there ain't no life. Same way with our body. When the spirit's gone, there ain't no life. And when the spirit's gone out of the church, there ain't no life. Can you shout amen? amen. And the Bible says, Paul says, they have a form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. Amen. Thank God for the power. Thank God for the power. Hallelujah. Powered by the Holy Ghost. Power, amen, to be able to and lift up and exalt Jesus. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. So Paul said, don't have anything to do with that church. Just, amen, turn away from it. Have nothing to do with it. And there's, and here's, and there's the lukewarm church. The lukewarm congregation, you know. How many knows we are the church? How many knows people are the church? It ain't the building. It's just a place where we congregate together and worship God. It's a good place to be. It's a good place where you can fellowship, where you can worship, where you, amen, soak in the goodness of God and the goodness of the, uh, of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That lukewarm church. Amen. It causes Jesus to get sick at his stomach. Amen. Did you ever eat something and once you, I mean, you know, got it in your mouth, but you didn't really eat it? Huh? It didn't taste very good. 
In fact, it really tasted bad. And you know what you did? Just like I do, you spit it out. Amen? Well, that's kind of what Jesus is talking about here. Amen? The lukewarm church, amen, makes him sick in his stomach. It don't taste good, and so he just spits it out. Hallelujah. I don't blame him. Amen? You know, a lukewarm church is caused by many different things. A lot of different things happen to cause a church to become lukewarm, such as warm music. Just, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> lukewarm singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lukewarm. Lukewarm worship. The Bible said we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. And when we should worship God in spirit and in truth, God gets the glory. And we get blessed. Hallelujah. Lukewarm singing. Did you know singing has a message in it? Amen. It ministers to us. And we minister to God. It depends on the message that's in the song. And so it's good to get into the, to the worship service. It's good to get into the singing. Amen? No excuses. Somebody said, but we don't have no hymnals. Oh, we got one of the biggest hymnals you ever saw. <laughs> hanging up there on the wall. Hallelujah. Amen? You can't miss it. Can you shout it, man, with me? So get the message out of the song and, amen, and let it feed your soul. Hallelujah. You can get something out of singing to God. You can, you can get something when the worship leaders are leading us into singing, and, and it'll feed your soul. It'll build up your faith. It'll get you ready to receive the Word of God. Hallelujah. Then there's, a lot, there's lukewarm preaching. That's the biggest cause. If you had a preacher on fire for God, preaching you the truth, you wouldn't be, long, you wouldn't be lukewarm very long. Can you shout amen? amen? Because the word of God will fire you up. Amen? It'll build your faith. It'll make you realize who you are. You're a child of the king, bought by the blood. Hallelujah. And you have the favor of God upon your life. It's important. Amen, to have an on par preacher. Hallelujah. But the reason there's a lukewarm church is because there's lukewarm preaching and teaching. Lukewarm tithing and giving. I'll tithe, you know, if I can afford it. Huh? Or I'll just give God some of it and I'll keep some of it. Or I'll send it somewhere else to some other place or some, you know, I'll use it for something else. Listen, it belongs to God. It's not yours to give to somebody else. Come on. You may as well shout. I said it belongs to God. It don't belong to us to do what we want to do with it. And, of course, God gives us that opportunity. But when we do that, you know what, heaven? He shuts up the window. There ain't no more pouring out. And you wonder where things are ha- why things are happening. You wonder why the washing machine quit. Hey Amen. You wonder why the kids tore his clothes, you know. You wonder why this and that, why the car quit, why you had a blowout, or why you got a ticket. I'm telling you, when you tithe and give to the kingdom of God, God promised to rebuke the devourer for your sake. He'll keep you covered. Lukewarm tithing and giving will get you in trouble. Hallelujah. Lukewarm praying. I'll pray if I'm getting trouble. I'll pray, you know, every now and then. Especially now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Lord, bless this food. Let it be nourishment to my body. Come on now. That's lukewarm praying. Amen? But the Bible tells us, amen, that the affectional 
Fervent of prayer, the righteous availeth much. Fervent of praying. Amen. Get on fire. Hallelujah. Cry out to God sincerely. Hallelujah. Talk to God sincerely. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Give praise unto him. Give thanksgiving unto him. Amen. Begin to think about how good he is to you. And give praise and glory and honor unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. That will get God's attention. Hallelujah. But a lukewarm church has lukewarm prayer warriors. Then there's the, here's another reason. Lukewarm reading and studying the Bible. Hmm. There's difference in reading and studying. You know? But we ought to read it anyway. That's a letter from God to us. Come on. Somebody said, well, I thought there was one from Paul out of them. Yeah, but Paul didn't get it on his own. He got it from God. He got it from the anointing. He got it from the Holy Ghost. Amen? And so, it's a letter from God for us. Amen. He lets us know that he loves us. He lets us know that he supplies our need. He lets us know that we need to walk on the straight and the narrow way. Can you shout amen? amen. So, the Bible says, study that you may show yourself approved. You know, a person that can rightly divide the word of God and, you know, and get the truth out of it. Can you shout Amen. Somebody said, well, I just don't quite understand. I just don't quite understand the Bible. Well, they got all kinds of Bibles, you know. I mean, they got Bibles that you can understand. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And then there's lukewarm attendance. I'll go to church, you know, if I feel like it. I'll go to church if Pastor Hilton's going to be there. Do you know people will stay home sometime when the pastor is not there? That's why you don't get up here and broadcast it. Come on. See, I used to be a pastor too. And I learned not to broadcast it. Because if I did, half of them would stay home. That's preacher religion. Religion will send you to hell. We need, we need to understand, amen, that it's important that we congregate together and pray together. Corporate prayer is more powerful than we realize. You know, one person praying, that's powerful. But when you get a group of people praying, I'm telling you, that's powerful. Can you shout amen? Amen. I can see our Heavenly Father looking down, amen, and, and, and smiling. So, warm attendance. I read this somewhere. I heard it anyway. But it said, missing church is a dismember. Dismember. I don't know if that's a real word or not. It said, missing church is a dismember. And the more you miss, the meaner you get. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And then, most of all, lukewarm love for God. I said lukewarm love for God. Huh? Can you, you know, God is love. And when you get God in you, you get love. Amen? But our actions shows how much love we got for God. Now, you see, I love my wife. But if I don't talk to her, if I don't love on her, Head on her, tell her I love her, show her I love her. How in the world would she ever know I love her? It'd be like that couple that got married. 
And, you know, he's, he told his, his, his bride, I love you. And a year or so went by, he never used that word again. And one day she got tired of it. She said, you never tell me you love me. He said, I told you I loved you when I married you. That should be enough, he said. And that's the way some people are. Amen? Lukewarm love for God. And then in Revelation 3, verse 17, Jesus said, and it's because thou sayest, I'm rich. See, I gave you all the reason why they were what I thought makes a, a church, a lukewarm church. But I'm going to tell you what Jesus said here in Revelation 3, 17. This is what he said about it. He said, and it's because thou sayest, I'm rich. I'm rich. Hmm. And increased with goods. Think about that. How many feel like you're increased with goods? Nobody? How come your basement's full? How come your garage is full? How come your attic's full? Huh? How come you got storage barns? They're everywhere. Increase with goods. Can you say amen? How many believe you're blessed? I said you're blessed. Amen. And whether you know it or not, you're rich. I said it whether you know it or not, you're rich. I had a, a missionary from Africa come and spend some time with me. And uh, he spent two weeks with me one time, two weeks again. And the first time he come, uh, he had never ate watermelon, never, he had never made, uh, ate ice cream. There's a lot of things, and he wouldn't eat a hot dog. I don't know why. Uh, he, he says it's because it's, it's a dog. I said, oh. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he said to me sincerely, you are a rich man, Pastor Hill. And I said, no, I'm not a rich man. He said, yes, you are a rich man. And I said, well, how do you figure I'm a rich man? He said, well, first of all, you live in a beautiful home, beautiful furniture. Amen. you got two automobiles, he said. And, you, and, I, and, and I see you wearing different suits. you got all kinds of beautiful clothes to wear and different shoes and things. He said, you're a rich man. And you know he stopped me right there. I said, he stopped me right there. You're rich and don't know it. I said, you're rich and don't know it. Come on. Amen. And not only that, you've got a bright future. Amen. I said, we've got a bright future. Somebody asked me about my retirement. You know, some, you know, some people, they get on a job, they they work several years or, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years, they can retire and get a retirement, then later get on Social Security, you know, and different things like that, right? And that's good. I'm not against that. Amen. But you know what? People ask me all the time after I stepped down from being a senior pastor, they said, what about your retirement, Pastor Hill? I said, it is wonderful. It's out of this world. Yeah. It's out of this world. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I do get so scary. <laughs> and this man, and, and, and here's what Jesus said, the reason they were lukewarm. He said, you say I'm rich. You know, they had all kinds of money. And, and that I'm, in, and I'm increased with goods. I got all kinds of goods, you know. And, 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 then, he, and then he says, and, and you're saying, I have need of nothing. But here's what Jesus said. Thou knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. They think that they are okay because, they, you know, being rich is all right as long as they don't become your God. Yeah. Having things is all right as long as they don't become your God. Yeah. Can you say Amen. And coming to a place where you don't really need anything as far as material things or food or clothes or anything things like that, you know, uh, that's, that's wonderful too. Can you say amen? amen. But let's be, let's, be, uh, let's be like this. Let's look up and see where it comes from. Yeah. 
I said, let's look up and see where it comes from. It comes from God. Can you say amen? The blessing of God, hallelujah, comes from above. Hallelujah. Let's don't be like the, the pigs and the hogs. They can eat, uh, eat apples under the apple tree and acorns under the acre tree and root and uh, just root and you know and, and, and just just grunt and grunt and you know and eat and chew and grunt. I never saw a hog look up to see where it's coming from. Maybe some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. But I'm a country boy. And I used to watch them. They love apples when they start falling on the ground. We just let them out of the pen so they go eat them apples. Huh? When the acorns started falling. They'd eat and grunt, eat and grunt, eat and grunt. They ever did look up to see where it's coming from. Huh? And that's the way a lot of people are. They just eat and grunt. Eat, grunt, and complain. Huh? You know, I wouldn't want to be a waitress or a waiter because I hear people eat and grunt, eat and grunt, and complain, and complain, huh? And send this steak back three times. You don't know what they do with that. They get upset at us, at people who do that. I'd rather just not say anything because I don't know what they're going to do with that piece of meat. Why do you say that, Pastor Hill? Because I, I, as, I, some of my kids worked at Burger King, McDonald's, and maybe you don't want to hear this. <laughs> but some of those boys, some of those girls, before they put that last little bun, that other half a bun, they, I mean, uh, and spit on that. I told you you didn't want to hear it. So you don't know what they're going to do with it. Amen? And then he said, but you, you know, you may have all these things, but he said, you're wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. And yet they think they're okay. Amen. They're lukewarm. These are the reasons Jesus said, I will spew you out of my mouth. The Laodicean church was not only a lukewarm church, but it, but it was also a, a failing church. Amen. A church that was falling away. A church that fell away, was falling away from God. Amen. In 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 1 and 3, it says, Paul says, Now we beset you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as for us as that day of Christ is at hand. How many believes he's coming soon? Amen. Paul said, But let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. How many believe there's a falling away today? Hmm? Preacher, pastors are giving up today. A lot of them are. A lot of churches are closing. When I first come into the Pentecostal Church of God back in 1962, become a pastor, we had churches all over the state. I mean, we had, I don't know, I can't remember, but it's close to 40 churches or a little better when, we first, when I first came into this. But I'm kind of ashamed to tell you a little bit. But we don't have near that many today. In the state of Indiana, I'm talking about. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is this. There's a falling away today. Amen? And there's many reasons for that. Amen? 
and, and, you know, I'm not against the online. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against that. I'm for that. Okay? But that's just one thing. Some folks think, you know, you stay home and, and uh, uh, you know, sit on the couch and watch it. And that's all right if you have to. But you won't get near the benefits if you're sitting on these seats. Amen? Come on now. So why there's a great falling away? Well, uh, we, we understand today there's a, luke, there's, there's a lot of lukewarm churches where the gospel's really not being preached, where, where people's ears are being t uh, tickled. Amen? So just give me a little, you know, uh, just tickle me a little bit, you know, and, but don't get on my toes. Amen? Uh, the, you know, just don't, don't make it too hard on me. But let me tell you, I wouldn't give you a nickel for a cold, dead sermon. But after church, you can give me a nickel. But I'm trying to keep it hot. I'm trying to keep it warm. All right? Okay. <clears throat> so there is a falling away. But thank God, Bethel is growing. Now, don't get me wrong. There, there's a lot of churches on fire for God today. And those churches that's on fire for God are growing churches. I said they're growing churches. People are being saved. People are being healed. Miracles are happening. Amen. Ministries are developing. Great things are happening. Amen. So the on fire churches. And across this country, there's many, amen, on fire churches for Jesus. And those on fire churches, amen, are the churches that Jesus is going to come and rapture out of this world. I said, he's going to rapture them out of this world. Thank God that you're part of an on fire church tonight. Hallelujah. And stay on fire for God. Hallelujah. And be ready because you know what? The trumpet is going to sound and the dead are going to rise. And we who are alive and remain that's on fire for God will be changed in a moment of a twinkling of eye and be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be. Yeah. Glory to God. I feel like preaching now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 3.18. Jesus offered the Laodicean church counseling. I mean, no, good, good godly counseling is very, you can't even put a price on it. I said you can't even put a price on it. Godly counseling. Can you say amen? Everybody needs counseling sometimes even if it's from your wife, men. And maybe you women wouldn't want to, you know, sometimes women don't want men to tell them what to do. Huh? <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what she told me before when we was getting married, you know? She said, Pastor Hill, I want to tell you this. You have a right to be wrong. <laughs> Amen? I've been trying to figure that out. <laughs> but he offered them counseling. In Revelation 3.19, Jesus said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Some of them do. And some of them don't. Can you say amen? amen? Some people can go through counseling and then just go right back doing the same old stuff. Yeah. And then some people go through counseling. They get a lot of help. They put it, you know, they put it in their mind and, amen, in their life. And, amen, they begin to act up on it. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden they find out that's a good thing. <laughs> I said it's a good thing. Can you shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. Good counseling, amen, is good. It'll help you along the way. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, they are spewed out, spewed out of his mouth into the tribulation days under the Antichrist government to be martyred. Just think about it now. When the Lord comes to rapture the church, he's coming back and he's going to rapture the on fire church. If you're lukewarm, you're not going now. 
How are we going to spew you out? Right? And so, the on fire church is going to go up. I said you're going to go up. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? But guess what? We're the only hindrance of the, of the Antichrist coming now, right now, you know, taking over. Well, you can kind of see that spirit taking over today. Come on. Amen. But anyway, the rapture, the rapture church are going to go up in, in the heaven and enjoy the goodness that God has prepared for them. Can you shout amen? And we're not going to go into all that, but I just want to tell you this. Those who don't make the rapture, amen, will have to go into the tribulation days. Amen? Now, you talk about a revival. Huh? I said, you talk about a revival. A revival is going to break out. Well, where's the preachers? Well, Enoch and Elijah's going to come back and start preaching. Huh? Come on. There's going to be some angels flying around preaching, according to the Bible. Amen. So I'm, I'm not going to go too far with this, but I want to say this. Amen. That if you miss the rapture, you have to face the Antichrist and its government. And you, you'll be forced to take the mark of the beast. And if you resist, they're going to kill you. And hoping and praying all those folks that's been spewed out that's lukewarm and cold and all that's been left to go through into the, uh, into the tribulation days, seven years of it, amen, hopefully I'm praying that they've heard enough. They've heard enough of the gospel, amen, that they're willing at that time to give their life for the cause of Christ because they want to go to heaven and they don't want to go to hell. You talk about a revival. The Bible said there's going to be a number of them, amen, that no man can number that will come up out of the great tribulation. Find it in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm just about ready to close so if you'll come to the music. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What a loving God we have. I said, what a loving God we have. Hallelujah. Amen. He's long-suffering towards us. Hallelujah. Amen. Not willing that we should perish. Amen. But that we would repent. Then in Luke chapter 21, verse 36, Jesus said this, Watch ye therefore and pray always. Oh, isn't it wonderful how he tells us he's making a way for us? I said how he's making a way for us. How many glad he brought you this far? Hallelujah. How many glad he brought you out of the mire clay of sin? How many glad that he, amen, resurrected you from sin and, and give you eternal life? Hallelujah. And what did Jesus say? He's saying this to the church, amen, to believers. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy. Amen. Are you worthy? Amen. Sometimes we, we get that feeling in our, amen. Sometimes we, you know, we get the feeling, I'm not worthy. You are worthy. Because God made you worthy. Amen. Anybody got any children in here and grandchildren? Huh? Oh, yeah, everybody got something. <laughs> but remember this. Remember this. They're yours. And in spite of their orneriness, you still love them. And God loves us even greater than we can love our own children, our grandchildren. Amen? Somebody said, I wish my grandchildren were born first. But Jesus said, now, I'm going to make a way for you. And he's been making a way. Amen. It started out by being born again. Amen. He said, watch you therefore. How many is watching? I said, who's watching? What, what are you going to watch for? 
Watch for the signs of the time. Watch what's happening in the world. See if it lines up with the Bible. It's end time things. Can you shout amen? Watch you therefore and pray always. Pray. I said pray. Don't be, a, don't be a lukewarm prayer warrior. Amen. But pray earnestly. Pray always that you may be accounted worthy. Amen. Pray that you'll be worthy, accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus loves us so much that he warns us and he tells us to watch and pray that we may be able to escape the tribulation that's coming upon this world. Amen. Would you stand with me? Got my musicians around here, singers. Amen. I hope I've said something tonight. Get your attention. Because it's so easy to get lukewarm. Get comfortable. And start doing what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. Our pastor, I might say our pastors, plead with us for help a lot of times. Volunteer workers. Get connected. Do something. Amen. You can't serve God sitting on a couch. Somebody say, I'm serving God. The way you serve God is by engaging, getting part, getting involved. Amen. You may love God. You may worship God. You may attend regularly. But are you serving God? When you get on fire for God, you want to do something for God. Huh? I said, when you get on fire for God, you want to do something for God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I don't know what to do. Well, ask one of these pastors around here. They'll tell you. Ask some of them younger preachers. I, you know, sometimes I don't know what to tell you. Right? But Pastor Hilton will tell you. Pastor Bev will tell you. Pastor Hubbard will tell you. And Pastor Ethan will tell you. And some of these deacons will tell you just how to get connected and do something for God. Hallelujah. So I hope I've said something tonight to encourage your heart. Amen. Stay on fire for God. Stay on fire for God. Hallelujah. When that trumpet sounds, I don't know about you, but I want to take a plane or a ride. I've, went, I've, I've took a few airplane rides, but I want to take a plane air ride. And I want to meet Jesus. Do you? We're going to sing something. And if you'd like to pray, the altar's open. Or if you're here tonight and you're not feeling well, you need to be anointed and prayed for. We'd be glad to do that for you. Man, I've told you what God's put on my heart tonight. Somebody needed to hear what I had to say. So I hope you'll respond to that. Don't always have to be here. It can be your altar at home. It could be right where you're standing. Okay? So, let's just lift our hands and give God a thank you. God, we thank you tonight. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for being so good to us, God. Thank you, God, for our good pastors. Thank you, God, for a wonderful congregation. Thank you, God, for an on bar church that's doing something for you today, God. Thank you for a friendly church. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing for us. Hallelujah. 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 Give Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us online today. 
We hope you've had a powerful experience. We want to take this time to personally help you navigate the next steps in becoming connected. If you've made a decision for Christ today, need prayer, or want more information about our church, you can visit our website at bfwc.net. Also, if you didn't get a chance to give online during today's message and would like to contribute financially, you can visit us at bfwc.net forward slash giving and choose the option that works best for you. We look forward to hearing from you and God bless.